been a while since I stepped in front of the camera. This past year has been a clusterfuck. You know, I've had my ups and I've had plenty of downs and that really, really left me unmotivated to pursue this channel. I know I've uploaded some stuff last year. Uh, I think I put out my best work when it comes to filmmaking. And I feel like I could probably top that this year with some of the ideas that I do have. One of those includes a full length feature film. Uh, completely original idea, not related to horror at all. More like comedy drama and surrounding something else that I'm passionate about, which is music, the punk, the punk rock scene in particular. So, yeah, there's a lot of shit that I missed in 2022, like my fucking 10 year anniversary, because I started this channel, I think, July 26, 2012, when I was 12, now I'm 23. Just crazy to think that, you know, even though I've been on and off in terms of like being active and inactive. I've been doing this shit for 10 years. So, thank you guys for all your support. Whether it be, you know, the early years before I hit puberty and I was recording my TV playing Tony Hawk or Celebrity Deathmatch. Or, uh, you know, if you, if you were there for like all the old school Halloween videos when it came to talking about Halloween returns and just like different predictions when I was a part of like the hardcore Michael Myers community you know I still have friends in that community like Eric Veerthaler, Nate Dunning, uh, Brandon DeVore uh, I've lost some friends in that community whether it become because of losing communication or you know loss and with that being said, you know, rest in peace forever, Brandon Lee. Can't believe that it's going to be seven years since he's been gone. And also, if you were there for the beginning of filmmaking, whether you watched Halloween 666 or you've tuned into the Jackass Rampage Productions channel and watched all the films on there, you know, thank you. If you were there for my musical journey in Suburban Paradise and you checked out the full length shows that I put on there, I uploaded a bunch of concerts from. I think I put my first concert on there when we played the Mod Spot in 2017. And then I posted our last four, our return concert uh, at the now rebranded VMI. And I think we did, I, th I think the Backyard Show and the Gilman Show and then the last VMI shows on there. But if you ever checked out our music, thank you. If you ever checked out one of our shows, thank you. Um, if you haven't known already, we split up in May. Uh, we put out our last EP in July, but we officially disbanded in May. Um, yeah, it sucks, but life moves on, and so do I. <laughs> but anyway, you know, there's, there's your update on, like, why I've been inactive, and there's my thanks for 10 years, and for all of your guys' continued support. I've also hit five, 500 subscribers, so that's pretty sick as well, thank you. The topic of today's video, if you know me, then you know that there's two things that I love more than anything. And that is music and horror movies. I'm a hardcore horror movie fan. <laughs> I am a hardcore movie fan and that is what I always go by before a musician or a music fan. I live for horror movies. I like to make my own horror movies. I get excited when a good horror movie comes out. 
especially if it's on the topic of like my favorite slashers and today we're going to be talking about honestly one that I haven't really like made a standalone like discussion video for and honestly he's like right like Michael Myers is right here this dude's right here and that's Ghostface I've been a Scream fan probably just as long as I've been a Halloween fan maybe might even predate that if I choose to count scary movie because that was the first one I saw um, but I've always loved Scream you know I was 11 years old when Scream 4 came out and I never got to see it in theaters but as soon as it came out on DVD I begged my dad to take me to Kmart remember when Kmart's were still a thing and uh, picked up a copy watched it and fucking loved it when Scream 5 came out last year I was so excited to see it uh, I didn't catch the early screening like I did with all the Halloween movies but I made sure the next day I caught that first showing and yeah the first one is in my opinion just as good as the original Halloween just as good as just as good as like any of the other like highly acclaimed horror films and it's a very important film too because it really reinvented the genre when it was dying so I think we owe a lot to that movie because <laughs> who knows where horror would have been now if Scream never got released and then started a whole like plethora of knockoffs um yeah I love the original Scream I love Scream 4 and I love Scream 5. Those are my top three. You know, nothing against two. Uh, the only one I really don't like is Scream 3. But, you know, I was excited to find out that Scream 6 was greenlit so soon after the first, like, after 5 came out. You know, that was the first Scream film in 11 years. It's crazy to think about. And it was my first Scream film in theaters, too, so that was pretty sick. That was the first time I ever saw a Scream movie alone. Or that was the first time I ever seen a movie alone. And damn, that was a really nice experience. I had my tub of popcorn, went to the theater with the reclining seats, just kicked back and just watched. Just watched. I'm not going to say a masterpiece because it does have its flaws, but just watched a kick ass film. <laughs> So, with the release of Scream 6 coming in just a little under two months, I want to make a prediction video. Not really a prediction video, but more of like my hopes and dreams for this new one. I guess you can say it's a prediction because, you know, these aren't confirmed. But, these are all things that I would like to see. I got five... I think maybe some of you guys will agree with me. I feel like my reasons are all like, oh yeah, yeah, we do too. And you know, like that's something everybody wants to see. And then some of them might be like, oh hell no, fuck that. But anyway, we got a, uh, we got five. So let's start right now. Number five would be for something to motivate Sydney to come back in Scream Seven. You know, I'm pretty sure after this movie comes out, whether it does well or not, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a seventh film. And even though Sydney's not going to be in this one because of, uh, I guess, the contract negotiations, you know, she felt like she wasn't getting paid enough for the amount of time she was going to be on screen. If she could be in seven, if she gets a better contract, and if they set up a damn good reason for her to come back... One of my uh, reasons for her to come back will be discussed later in the video because that's another like thing I hope to see. But just give set something up in this film to where she has like no choice to come back and finish this off. And if Scream Seven's the last one, then you got to make it big in this one. Number four. A Scream 2 opening scenario. Now I'm not saying replicate the opening to Scream 2 in the beginning. 
but you kind of seen it a little bit in the trailer, you know, like all the ghost face on the subway. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. It could be, you know, taken in two ways. You have all the ghost face in there and that distracts from the real ghost face. But also what I mean by this is, you know, this movie obviously takes place in New York. New York's a really busy fucking it's a really busy state. <laughs> Wherever they are, it's fucking packed. And it's Halloween. So while everybody's like in their costumes, they're probably drunk on drugs. Uh, Ghostface could chase one of the uh, one of the characters down and fucking kill him in public, and people would probably think it's a prank. You know, I think that would be amazing, and I really hope to see that. You know, because. Like they said in the the tagline, in the city of millions, nobody hears you scream. So I'd really like to see a death in public. And that's what I mean by like the Scream 2 opening scenario. Number three. This uh, leads into number five. And that is a previous movie survivor dies. And I'm still pretty bitter over this. Uh, do we die in then five? You know, I really thought that it should have been Gale, honestly. So, what better motivation to give Sydney to come back than Gale dying? And then Sydney can find out, and that just drives her over the edge, and she has to come back and like finish this once and for all. You know, I feel like I feel like Sam dying or Tara dying. Like, she didn't know them that well. She only knew them, like, for probably a couple hours from the last movie. So, I don't feel like them dying is, like, strong enough motivation for her to want to come back. Um, I don't know if it would matter that much if Kirby died. But, I don't know. However it plays out, if it plays out, we'll see. But, I feel like... Gail dying would be the perfect motivation for Sydney to want to come back and try to defeat Ghostface. Number two. One thing that we've heard many times in the interviews is that this movie is going to be 100 times gorier than any of the previous past, like any of the pre previous films. So I thought why not get something that we haven't gotten yet in this franchise besides the MTV show a head decapitation if you're saying that this movie is the goriest of the of the franchise why not cut somebody's head off you know like you seen that you seen that scene in the MTV show where Bella Thorne sitting in her pool and then her boyfriend's head gets thrown in the pool Fuck that. Actually show somebody's head getting cut off. You know, that movie will f fucking... <laughs> that movie will have some balls if they do that. Scream 5 had some balls for killing Dewey off in a gory-ass way. What's more gorier than the way he died? And I think that would be a head decapitation. Or like the fucking picture that got released. Or leaked. I don't know. Of Ghostface holding a shotgun. Have him blow somebody's fucking head apart. And show that shit. That would give that movie some fucking balls. But, uh, yeah, we haven't gotten a head decapitation in, in any of the movies. So, like, this one could be the one to do it and solidify itself as the goriest movie in the franchise. Number one, The Killer Escapes. Now, I'm almost certain that there's gonna be more than one killer in this movie. And,. I am on that I am on that train that Stu's probably going to be one of them. So, you you can I'm guessing there's going to be 3 mainly cuz the pictures that we've seen all of them have three different masks. So, why not have one of them get away and the other two can die and that can set up the 7th movie and the motivation that Sydney has to come back. What if when the killer reveals himself, it's Stu? I know everybody already predicted this, but these are things that I hope to see in Scream, uh, Scream 6. So, 
that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, I have... I don't want to say that I have high hopes, but I do. Mainly because I love Scream 5 so much, and I'm just so fucking excited for this new movie. I'm so, I'm so digging that it's taking place in an entirely new setting as well. And... March 10th just can't get here soon enough. So anyway, my plans until Scream 6 drops is to review every single movie. We got five and then rank them at the end. And then hopefully by the time I'm finished with that, Scream 6 would have dropped and I can give you guys a review on that. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for 10 years on YouTube. Thank you for 500 subscribers. And thank you guys for checking out uh, A Christmas Scream. That was definitely the best thing I've ever made. And thank you for checking out Shape Lurking 5 as well. The last one's going to come out next, or this year. Fuck, I forgot we're in 2023. Yeah. Alright. <laughs>